for uh, field goal percentage at .909. He was 10 for 11. It's the third time this has happened. Um, most recently in 2015 by uh, Bond Ventures, Dion Wright. Here we go, Coach. Turn it over to you. Awesome, thanks. Uh, just really proud of our team. Uh, even before I get into that, I want to congratulate St. Joe's, um, Coach Lang and his staff, his players, I mean, on, on such a great season and, and uh, a really hard fought battle, you know, each game that they've played here uh, in the tournament. Um, they're really tough. Um, you know, they have a collection of players that, you know, competes really hard, uh, that uh, really put a ton of pressure on us, you know, in this game. <coughs> Um, and even the game, obviously, in Richmond. Um, the shot making, uh, the execution uh, on the offensive end, and then the defensive execution that they had caused us uh, to have some really you know, tough spurts out there um, where we, we struggled scoring. Um, you know, the transition offense in the first half kind of got us. Uh, you know, we, we really botched some plays you know, in and around the rim when we had some advantages probably weren't uh, patient enough to, to try to find some, some more advantages behind us as opposed to, to the rim. Uh, I thought St. Joe's did a nice job of walling up at the rim, you know, a few times um, where we got out and got ahead. Um, we just couldn't convert those, you know, to, to create a little bit more separation. Um, obviously the goal 10 changed the score of the game, you know, there and it was a little bit tighter in that timeout than it, than it actually was. Obviously I, I know it was a good call. Um, but, you know, from a mental perspective, that changed a little bit. And, you know, they, they did a nice job going on a run to finish the half and, um, and, and have a two-point lead. We talked about at halftime, we've been here before, you know, certainly uh, at home against them. And then obviously uh, the first game against, against Fordham uh, being down two. You know, we've been there plenty of times this season, and uh, we just needed to come out of halftime, you know, with, with uh, a better defensive effort and more execution on offense. Uh, I think, obviously, we were led by, you know, Max's ability to make timely shots over and over and over again. The guys trusted one another, and the defense really stiffened and tightened up, um, you know, as the game wore on. But uh, obviously a weird ending with that many fouls, you know, that they had to give, you know, a lot of pressure on the inbounder. Sean did a great job. Uh, the guys did a great job of continuing to get open in a very tight situation. We haven't had one of those all season where it's been like that. Um, and eventually we were out of timeouts, you know, and, and I thought they did a good job of continuing to put pressure on us, you know, in that situation. Not an easy thing uh, for us to get through there, but uh, really proud of the guys and, uh, you know, certainly looking forward to our, our prep, you know, for tomorrow. Um, yeah, Ty Wilson, Time Well Times. Um, Sean, you just hit a thousand points uh, for the career. Uh, I just wanted to hear your opinion on how you feel after that. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. Um, I, I think I maybe I would have got it a little while ago if I wasn't um, so injury prone, but I'm um, not happy to finally get there, but I'm more happy with um, going to the championship game. Yeah, this is a question for Sean. Yeah, to think back off that, how meaningful is it always setting a, a scoring record, especially in times like this? Yeah, I think it's just um, kind of a milestone you can look back at your college career and kind of be um, proud about. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm just stoked that we, we won and we get to keep playing. Before we ask another question, let's remember to identify ourselves and the affiliation, please, for the coach and the players. Zach Joaquin, Richmond Times Dispatch. Uh, Max, you took a deep breath there at the free throw line at the end. What's going through your head? 63-60, game on the line when you stepped to the line and, and made those two. Um, not much. It's just my like my free throw routine. I just I take a breath in and breath out. One dribble shoot. That's, that's about it. Like, I wasn't really yeah. <laughs> not, not, not much was going through my mind. Just smack the free throw down. <laughs> Same days in the House of College Hoops. Max, three for four in the first half is pretty commendable. Uh, Scoreline from the field, but in the second, you were seven for seven. Uh, can you talk about what kind of click for you throughout the, in this game? Uh, I was just taking shots that the, that the defense was uh, was doing. That's about it. And yeah, they, were all, they were all going in as well. Yeah. Matt Shelton, I, BCRedNation.com. Max, um, how much?
much do you get excited about playing against a guy like Eric, Eric Reynolds, a future pro, someone you know is going to, you know, challenge you and someone you can get basically into a scoring battle with? Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's exciting. Uh, it's exciting. It, it, it's challenging to, you know, uh, stop a, a great defensive player like that, like him uh, on the defensive side and, and going against him on, on offense as well. So, um, yeah, it definitely, it's definitely, uh, you know, yeah. It definitely <coughs> gives you something, something more to, to look for as well than just winning the game. Sean, Paul Snyder from the Montauk Sun. With 2.40 uh, left in the game, you had Zeb and, and Joe, double team uh, St. Joe's guy, steal the ball, get it to you for a big bucket, put you guys up 59-55. You remember that play? Yeah. <laughs> what did you think about your defensive effort today? You turned them over 14 times. You only had eight turnovers. Uh, I think we've done a good job over the last couple of days of just uh, having active hands. Um, Zeb's freakishly athletic and, and quick with his hands, and he's got a bunch of steals over the last, the last couple of days, um, and, and Joe as well. Everyone's just um, being active, using, using their length and, and size, and um, yeah, causing havoc out there. Zach Joaquin, Richmond Times Dispatch. Guys, take us inside the beginning of the second half. You didn't make a three in the first half. They ended the first half on a 13-2 run. How big was it to get those couple of threes early on in the second half to kind of kickstart things offensively? Yeah, I mean, it, it was big to make those threes. We, we just talked at, at halftime that um, when, when we played them at home early in the season, you know, we were pretty much in the same exact situation. I'm pretty sure we were like down two or three. So we were like, we've been here before. They just come out strong and, and go on the run uh, to start the second half. Um, Austin Hoydar of the Phoenix. Um, you, at the, in the end of the second half, some of your teammates are kind of calling on your fans to kind of stay loud and they do the rest of the game. What does that mean to you guys to support you throughout this run? Yeah, it's, it's really cool that um, there are more fans that came down for the weekend. Um, we, we really appreciate it and it just gives you a, um, more energy. There was even a guy, when I was inbound the ball, um, Tell me I can throw it into the backcourt, and that actually helps. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, uh, outside of college basketball, you're not really allowed to throw it in the backcourt, so you, you can't uh, forget about that fan show and obviously Ukraine. So, um, yeah, fans are big time. <coughs> Adam Epstein, 910, the fan. Uh, Sean, so coach was talking about that, that the inbounds passes with them fouling over and over again. You know, what's going through your mind as you, you're aware of how much timeouts are left and trying to find the open guy? Torture. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's a bit stressful, but um, I feel like I've been in that position where I'm kind of the, um, the, the inbounder at, at most end game situations. So I've um, been, been in throughout the year, but um, yeah, looking up and knowing that we're going to have to get it in six times before we shoot free throws was um, a bit frustrating, but part of the game. Zach Joaquin, Richmond Times Dispatch. Sean, have you gotten more confident in that outside shot later in the season? It seems like you're shooting with more confidence from out there. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Coach pretty much just called me out constantly, telling me to shoot the ball. So um, yeah, it just um, gives you a lot of confidence when the guy who's, who's running everything is telling you to shoot. <laughs> Matt Schultz. Yeah. yeah, Max, you got to turn for them to the field, like. Like, how often do you like practice your shots prior to, to to working towards moments like this? How often do I practice my shots? Yeah. Um, every day, pretty much. Maybe t take a take a day off here and there. Um, you know, when when we have a a long stretch of games throughout the season, but uh, pretty much every day before practice, when we're coming in, uh, I I try to come in like thirty minutes before and go through my everyday routine uh, of my shots and. Yeah, just every day. Matt Sheldon at com. Max, we got you, Zeb, and Jason Nelson. Basically a bunch of point guards are on the team, but the primary ball handler, I, I think I called Sean a big early this season. I learned he's a big guard. How much of a luxury is it as a point guard to have someone like that who can, you know, take pressure off you guys? Because um, you have a forward bringing up and he's got a forward guarding him. Not a forward, a big guard, excuse me. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's great, to have, great to have multiple ball handlers. Um, you know, usually four, uh, four 
four or one of our five uh, guys that are on the floor can can bring the ball up and, and get us into our offense. So, um, yeah, it's really great to have. Ben Rikosh, WVCW Sports Radio. Joe only had five points tonight, but he impacted the game in other ways, especially on defense against their tough guards up top. How important is that for you to have a bunch of guys that can impact in many ways throughout the game? Uh, I feel like it just um, gives you like a bit of confidence that it's not like all on you in a way. Like you can go into the game knowing that you're just gonna be able to go with the flow of the game, and if it's your night, it's your night, and if not, um, we have so many guys that it's gonna be someone's night. Um, so you can just play team basketball and um, yeah, just play 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 free and together. Okay, we're gonna dismiss our student athletes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.